Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, would you please stand? And Ms. Ager, would you please stand and face the jury during the oath? <coughs> ladies and gentlemen of the jury, would you raise your right hand and keep it raised during the oath? And at its conclusion, would you each say, I do? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will carefully consider the evidence and the law presented to you in this case and that you will deliver a fair and true verdict as to the charge against the defendant to help you God? Thank you. Members of the jury may be seated. Uh, please listen to reading of the charge. The docket number is 2011-S1052. The undersigned complains that Catherine Ager of 6 Mystic Place in Keene, New Hampshire, at 351 Chestnut Street in Manchester, New Hampshire, on the fourth day of June 2011 at 4.45 p.m. in said county and state, did commit the offense of resisting arrest or detention contrary to statute and the laws of New Hampshire for which the defendant should be held to answer in that the defendant did knowingly physically interfere with a person she recognized to be a law enforcement official seeking to effect her arrest when she struggled with Officer Elston, Sergeant Mucci, and Sergeant Patty as they attempted to handcuff her against the peace and dignity of the state. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defendant, Catherine Ager, has been arraigned on this charge and has pled not guilty, and of this she puts herself upon her country for trial, which country you are. The Assistant County Attorney, Charlene Dulac, has joined the issue, and you are to say by your verdict if the defendant, Catherine Ager, is guilty of the offense, whereof she stands charged, or not guilty. Hearken to the evidence. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me just give you some preliminary instructions uh, before the attorneys begin. Uh, first, let me say that notwithstanding the presence of, of, of video equipment in the courtroom, and just so you know, the videographers have been instructed clearly that they are not to be photographing you. They are photographing the witnesses. They can certainly take as many pictures as me if they want, um, and of counsel and Ms. Ager, but they are not to be photographing you, and they've confirmed that, and that's court order, and they understand it, uh, just so you know. But uh, notwithstanding the fact that, uh, uh, th that there are cameras in the courtroom, this is not television. Um, and uh, you shouldn't expect this case to proceed as cases do on television. Television is entertainment. This is real life. Um, this is not Boston Legal or Law and Order or any of the fair or The Good Wife or any of the new TV shows. Um, uh, and you shouldn't expect what happens in this courtroom to bear any any real resemblance to what goes on. If, if any resemblance to what actually happens on TV is serendipitous. Uh, they don't they don't follow the law. They follow the script. Um, uh, and, and they're dealing with entertainment here, we're dealing with, with serious business, we're dealing with uh, the way our justice system addresses accusations against our citizens. Um, uh, and and, uh, and I, I trust you will see the process unfold in a way far differently than it unfolds on television. I wouldn't expect Attorney Dulac to conduct herself as attorneys do on television, and I wouldn't expect that I would conduct myself as judges or those people that are acting as judges that do on television. Um, you um, as the jury are the finders of fact from the evidence. The evidence in this case uh, will be the testimony of witnesses and there are some exhibits that will be introduced into evidence as well, some videotapes. Um, uh, the order of the trial is as follows. Um, you will first hear the opening statements by counsel. The state, because it has the burden of proof, will go first and then Ms. Egger will, be, uh, will, will have an opportunity to address you. Opening statements are not evidence. Opening statements just allow the parties um, to preview what they think the evidence will show from their from their particular point of view. Points of view, pardon me. After the after the parties have provided you with their opening statements, um, we'll move to the taking of testimony. The state, because it has the burden of proof, will call its witnesses first. Um, Attorney Dulek will examine those witnesses, that's called direct examination. Ms. Ayer will be given an opportunity to question the witnesses as well, that's called cross-examination. There may be redirect and recross-examination as well. Um, when the state has concluded its case, it will rest. Um, as you know from the general instructions you got when you were first selected, and I think from the instructions that I just gave you um, during the voir dire portion, uh, the defendant is presumed to be innocent, um, and she has no obligation to produce any evidence whatsoever. The burden of proof in a criminal case remains with the state to prove its case beyond a reasonable doubt throughout the course of the trial. Uh, during the course of the trial, there may be objections made. Uh, either party can make objections, um, and uh, it, they are simply seeking to enforce the legal rules of evidence. Uh, the parties may come to the bench for a further discussion uh, about the, the bases for their objection. Um, you should draw no inferences from the rulings I make on objections, and you'll hear that instruction again at the close of the case. 
Uh, when all the evidence is in, the, the uh, Ms. Edgar and Attorney Dulek will present their closing arguments. Once again, those arguments are not evidence. Um, they simply uh, give the parties an opportunity to present to you what they, what they believe the evidence has shown, but ultimately the decision is yours. At the close of that portion of the case, I will instruct you on the law. Um, and after I instruct you on the law, you will then deliberate uh, to reach a verdict. Um, we will break during the course of the trial at, at interval, regular intervals, but if, if you need a break for whatever reason um, and, and we haven't announced a break, just raise your hand and we'll take a break. Um, let me just say that if during the course of the trial you have any questions, something arises that you're not sure about, a process or a personal matter or something that has arisen that you believe should be brought to my attention, do not discuss it with other jurors. Bring your problem to the bailiff's attention and he will then inform me and I will address it. But do not discuss any issues that might arise, personal concerns that might arise with fellow jurors. Um, and um, once again, you just heard me say it uh, about 15 minutes ago, but you're not to discuss the case with one another or with any third parties or engage in any, any independent research until the proceedings are over. You will discuss the case when you retire to deliberate. Attorney Dillon. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this case is about Catherine Aker, the defendant seated right over there, who physically resisted when members of the Manchester Police Department tried to arrest her. Today, you're going to hear from Sergeant Patty, Sergeant Mucci, and Officer Elston. They're all members of the Manchester Police Department, which I'm sure most, if not all of you are aware, is right here in Manchester in Hillsborough County. They're going to tell you today about their interactions with the defendant. They're going to tell you in their own words what happened that day. Prior to them coming uh, to, and taking the stand and telling you in their words what happened, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the testimony that you will expect to hear and also <coughs> what the state's burden of proof is in this case, what I have to prove to you during this trial in order to convict the defendant of resisting arrest. So let's start with the facts. On June 4th, 2011, you're going to hear that there was a number of people, about 10, 15, out people outside the Manchester <coughs> Police Department. They were writing on the walls, graffiti. They were writing with chalk on the walls of the police department, the retaining walls, and on the sidewalk. Because this is the crime, the police were investigating this crime, and they were taking pictures as evidence if they needed to use it at a later date, or what we call preserving the evidence. So they were taking pictures of the markings on the sidewalk, on the walls, um, things of that nature. While they were doing this, the defendant was standing on the sidewalk, standing on some of the chalk graffiti that was there. She was also standing in front of some graffiti that needed to be photographed. You will hear that Sergeant Patty asked the defendant to move. And instead of just moving, she tried to argue with him, and she didn't move. And he ended up telling her she was under arrest, and he goes to arrest her. When he attempts to handcuff her, you will hear that she starts struggling with him. Two other officers have to assist him in handcuffing the defendant, and that is Sergeant, um, excuse me, that is Sergeant Mucci and Officer Elston. Those are the other two officers that have to assist him in handcuffing the defendant. You will also see a video, uh, quite a bit of it was captured on a video, and you'll be able to see that as well. It's a little hard to see, but you will be shown that video during the course of this trial. You will also hear the defendant telling him to get off of her by using some swears when she's doing so. The defendant's physical physical act of struggling is why we're here today. That's resisting arrest. When an officer is trying to arrest you or detain you, you're not, you can't fight back. You, you submit to the arrest. That is the law of the state of New Hampshire. Whether you believe it's legal or illegal, you don't resist arrest. And there's a reason for that. It's for the safety of officers and for the safety of everyone else around. In order to convict the defendant of resisting arrest, there's four elements to it that the state needs to prove to you beyond a reasonable doubt. The first is that the defendant acted knowingly, meaning that she was aware of what she was doing, that she physically interfered with another person, and that she knew that the other person was a law enforcement official, and that the official was trying to arrest or detain her. Well, when you see this video, and when you hear from the officers, they're in full uniform. They're outside the Manchester Police Department, um, and they'll tell you that she resisted that day. 
The state is going to prove all of these elements to you beyond a reasonable doubt, and at the end of this trial, I'm going to appear before you again and ask that you find the defendant guilty of this crime. Sager. Hi, my name is Catherine Nager. Um, thank you for taking time out of your busy days to come here today. Um, we're here because on June 4th, 2011, I allegedly resisted arrest, delaying the arrest by one second. Um, you'll see two videos today, and in the first video, it will begin with me standing on the corner, uh, watching police officers a few yards down the sidewalk, um, talking, and then you'll see that nonchalantly they form a semicircle around me. And then Sergeant Patty politely asks me, excuse me, would you get off the chalk, please? I was a little bit confi confused because I did see that there was chalk. Oh, oh, just your name. Your Roach. So you'll see two videos today, and in the first video, you'll see that I was standing on the corner of Merrimack and Chestnut Street over by the police department, watching uh, multiple officers chat outside the police station, and one of them was taking photos. Um, and the video will show that they approached me and slowly formed a semicircle around me, and then Sergeant Patty asked me, excuse me, would you get off the chalk, please? I responded, and the way I responded was in confusion, and um, then he said that it's a, it was the scene of a crime, so I tried to ask him a question. He would not give me time to answer the question, he just, uh, interrupted and then he said it was a lawful order and I tried to ask a question and within a few seconds he reached out with his right hand and grabbed my left arm he was facing me and then he used his uh, left hand and put it behind my right shoulder so that he could turn me and at that time the 
way I was turned caused me to sort of lose balance and you'll see in the video that they lowered me to the ground where I lay not struggling um, while they applied the handcuffs to me. Um, as she had mentioned, I was telling them in the video to get off of me and I probably did not use the most ladylike language but it was kind of upsetting to be physically jostled around, especially when I made no movement or effort to run away or to prevent them from arresting me. Um, so I'm here a week before my high school graduation in hopes that the truth will be seen about this matter and it will not follow me and that at least one of you will say that I don't belong in jail for a year. Members of the jury, uh, the issue of punishment um, is for the court to decide whether, whether if you convict her, she goes to jail or not is my decision to make. And you will hear in the closing instructions that you, the issue of punishment is not for the jury to decide. Um, uh, the issue of punishment is for me to decide. Thank you for your attention. Is there some call Sergeant John Patty to stand? Please have a Could you please introduce yourself to the jury, spelling your last name? Yes, my name is uh, John Patty. Last name is spelled P-A-T-T-I. Tell the jury how you're employed. Uh, as a police officer by the city of Manchester. How long have you been a police officer in Manchester? Uh, I've been with Manchester for 16 years, and I had uh, four years prior experience before I came here. Are you certified police officer in the state of Manchester? Yes. Where is the Manchester Police Department located? Uh, it's 351 Chestnut Street. It's uh, actually across from the front of this area. And what county is that in? Hillsborough. Can you please describe for the jury what your duties and responsibilities are as a sergeant for the Manchester Police Department? Sure. Uh, my duties are the same as any other police officers. Uh, my responsibilities as a sergeant is to supervise uh, patrolmen during the course of their shift. Were you working for the Manchester Police Department back on June 4th, 2011? Yes. Do you remember what shift you were working that day? 4 to 12. Do you remember what you were wearing that day? Uh, this uniform. It's called the uniform of the day. It's just the short sleeves for the, for the summer weather. Is there also a hat that you wear with it? Yes. Were you wearing a hat on that day? Do you remember? No, I was not. So just the uniform that you have on now? Yes. Can you please tell the jury um, what was happening outside the police station that day? Just a brief overview. Uh, there was a group of maybe 15 to 20 people uh, who were protesting some of our police activities outside of the police department. They were um, writing on the building, uh, the exterior of the police department and the surrounding. We have a retaining wall that's up in front of the police station. Um, they were writing slogans up on the building with uh, chalk. Was that also on the sidewalk and retaining wall as well? Yes. Was this considered a crime? Yes, it was. And. What, as a result of it uh, being a crime, uh, was there anything done to preserve uh, the evidence or, or the markings that were made on the walls and, and the sidewalk? Sure. There were, um, prior to um, what we could consider the collection of some evidence, there were uh, a number of arrests that had been made. Um, so in order to document what had occurred uh, before the arrests, um, I had asked some detectives to come out and take photographs of the writings that had been written on the wall and the surrounding area. And were they doing that? Were they taking photos? Yes. And you, did you see the did you see the officers taking the photographs? Yes. And while the officers were, uh, they're actually detectives, is that right? Yes. Uh, while the detectives were taking photographs, what was occurring at that time? Uh, a number of the uh, people in this group were still. Uh, in the area, still around, um, on the sidewalk, in front of the police department. Now, while you were outside, did you have contact with a person by the name of Catherine Aker? Yes, I did. Do you see her here in the courtroom today? Yes, at the defense table in the uh, black dress. 
paraphrase that the record reflect the witness identified the defendant? Yes. And can you please explain for the jury how you came in contact with her on June 4, 2011? Um, as the uh, detectives were um, began to photograph the area, and, you know, if I can use this as front, you know, the police station would be here. Uh, Chestnut Street is in front, so they would have to come around from the side of the building and then begin northerly. I'm sorry, may I stop for a moment? Is it okay if he uses that board over Certainly. to show that to the jury? It's heavy. <laughs> I'll let him open it. <laughs> Yeah, Miss Sager, you can you can stand over here so you can see see the, the drawing. Okay. Can I just move on? Just move down a little bit this way, and a little out so the judge can see the drawing. All right, all right. It's more important the jury see it than I see it. Thank you. So if you could just draw the police department and, and where you were just talking about. Correct. We'll call that the. Uh, You want to stand on the other side, Ms. Sager? And I, the officer standing over here, why don't you move over to the other side and you can be able to see more, more easily. You're, you're going to block the jury. you, you got to go back a little bit. There you go. Jurors all see now? So, um, Chestnut Street's here, um, the sidewalk, uh, the front door of the police station here, and there's a side door. Um, now, in front of the police station is a retaining wall. Uh, so, the detectives were photographing um, graffiti that had been written on the building here um, along the sidewalks, along the retaining wall, and then they were going to walk northerly up here and continue photographing everything. I came out, you know, I was in and out a few times uh, during the course of events, but uh, came out of the steps down onto the Merrimack Street. Is this when you had contact with uh, the defendant? Yeah, she was. Um, can you please click here? If you can, I know it's only an estimate. Yep. She was standing here. Okay. And can you um, put a key for Sergeant Patty where you were standing when you first um, came in contact with her? Well, the uh, course of events, though. And where's the courthouse and all this so people can have some sort of uh, relation of where this is? That's where you guys are. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, please just going to ask that this be um, marked into evidence. Any objection? No. Marked is states one. Uh, I believe it's states three. Oh, so there are other, uh, I'm sorry, there are other pre marked exhibits, states three. Can you see Sergeant Patty or is this in your way? Is, is, yeah, why don't we move this? I think it's right in her sight line. Just put it back there. How you came into contact with the defendant outside the police department? Sure. As the uh, detectives were going to be walking uh, onto Chestnut Street and then beginning northerly, uh, she was standing where that X is, um, and I told her she was going to need to move uh, because we were going to be taking photographs. And did she did she move when you asked her to? No, she didn't. What did she do? 
Um, she began to ask questions about why she couldn't be there. I told her that there was evidence of a crime that we were going to be investigating, and she said to the effect of, you know, it's just chalk. Um, you know, I can't, it's on a public sidewalk, things to that nature. And was that, in, 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 I'm sorry, you testified earlier that that was in fact a crime? Yeah, the, the, the graffiti that was posted on the wall is um, a violation of city ordinance and also a violation of state uh, criminal code for a criminal mischief. So after the defendant um, didn't move after you requested her to move, what happened? Um, I told her again that if she didn't move, I was giving her a lawful order to move. If she didn't, she could be arrested. And then what happened? Uh, she still didn't move. She wanted to ask me questions. And at that time, I told her no, and I told her she was under arrest. And what did you do? As I went to grab onto her wrist, to um, place her under arrest. She pulled away from me and we began to struggle. I say we because there are other officers there as well. We began to struggle with her. Um, she was placed onto the ground and handcuffed. And who else assisted you in handcuffing the defendant? Uh, Sergeant Mucci and Officer Elston. Uh, while, you, uh, while you all three of you were involved in trying to handcuff her, was she still struggling? Yes. Now you mentioned that there were a number of officers there. Uh, how many officers do you think were out there that day? Uh, we probably had close to 10 police officers, I'd say. And how come so many? Um, well, the, the protest as it was occurring, first of all, they were you know, writing on our building, um, which you know, obviously, aside from being a crime, we took offense to. Um, part of the things that they were protesting um, was fine. You know, they have a message that they wanted to get out, and that's fine. But you know, we still have business that we need to conduct there. Um, a lot of times they were blocking the sidewalks, and they were told a number of times that if they were going to be out in front of the building, um, they had to be moving. That's part of the city ordinance um, that you can be out there, you just can't be standing still in one spot. Um, you know, a lot of the times, or after the um, initial arrests were made, that's when we had to come out and um, photograph the graffiti that was on the building um, and there was still probably 15 to 20 of them so um, for the most part their protest was peaceful um, but you know we still can't take that for granted so we have extra policemen out there in case there are problems. So for safety purposes? Yeah safety purposes uh, you know crowd control you know like I said we still have other business to conduct other people still want to come into the building. Um, prior to coming in today did you have the opportunity to um, review two videos? Yes I did. You know, at this time of day, can I ask to play um, each of the videos each of the videos separately for the jury? Okay. Yes, I understand. They're they're, they're <coughs> in my agreement. Correct, Attorney Yeager? Yes. yes. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, we will. We will as soon as we can. We we can't dim the daylight. That's the <laughs> skylight can't be dim. Anybody, is there anything that you can point out in here, like where you are or anything like that while they're displaying? I, I believe I had just walked past her. Uh, that, the shadow that you see right there in front of her is, I believe, her filming from her cell phone. Um, in the background, you can see, well, maybe you can see, there you go, there's a detective right there coming with the camera. Is that the one in plain clothes? There, there, yes, there are two plain clothes detectives. Out.
that with you asking the defendant to move? Yes. Yes. Yeah, no. In the pink sweater. And who are the other officers with you right there? Uh, Sergeant Lucci and Officer Austin. And are those the people you're talking about that were outside the police department that day? No, uh, those were a portion of them, yeah. Like I said, until that point, there had already been a few arrested on them. She's falling down her bed, trying to wiggle her arms away. Do Is there any doubt in your mind that the defendant was struggling with you and the other officers that day as you were attempting to arrest her? No. No further questions at this time, Judge? Any questions? So, Sergeant Patty, you keep referring to a group of protesters as if I was part of the group as opposed to just an individual who happened to be in the area at the time. Is that correct? Reason that you feel that I was part of a group as opposed to just an individual? Um, no, I testified that there were a group of people protesting in front of the um, police station. Okay. Um, so you stated that um, after you said it's the scene of a crime, I responded by saying it's just chalk. Correct? I believe so. I mean, I wasn't paying particular attention to that part, but I remember that comment. That, that's what you just testified to. Yeah, there was, again, I don't know your response to, you know, my, my okay. statement to you. But okay, yeah. well, you did just testify that I was saying it's just chalk, when in reality I was asking how is, and you never heard the end of my question because you began to talk over me, correct? Okay, yes. Um, so, the testimony about what I said was inaccurate? Well, no, it's, you know, accurate as to what's on the tape there. Again, there was mention of chalk, you know, how can this be a crime, it's just chalk. Alright, I, um, I don't recall saying it's just chalk anywhere in that video. Okay. Can you can you You understand Mr. Gregory? You can't okay. testify. You have yes. to ask the officer. Yes. I am going to rephrase that as okay. a question. I okay. apologize. If I play the video, could you please point out where I say that? Sure. We're in the second video? Or the first video? Which video do you want this to play? This is the first video. First video. the 
audio recordings? You should turn your audio up as loud as it'll go. Okay. 